Здравствуйте. Прошу прощения, я буду выступать по-английски, это мне сегодня легче, так как, очевидно, времени не хватит для всех этих сложных анализах. I wanted today to discuss, yes, can I have my first image, to discuss an episode in cultural, technical, political, ideological, phantasmagorical pattern I've been researching for nearly a quarter century. The attitude I call, which is called Americanism in Russian, pre-revolutionary and Bolshevik uh, architecture. And I want to start with an image of, uh, uh, if this works, yes, with uh, my favorite poster on the topic, the two Superman, an image uh, designed by Roman Cislewicz, an excellent Polish uh, graphic designer in the 60s. The period discussed at this conference is the Cold War, in which the competition between uh, the U.S. and the USSR was uh, central, strategic and military. The competition was also technological, cultural, and symbolical, as shown by this collage. This was uh, not exactly new. Um, as early as 1912, symbolist poet Alexander Bloch had seen in the industry of the Donbass the, prom the promise of a new America, Nova America. A few years later, all the Bolshevik leaders, and here I'm making a very long story, very short, all the Bolshevik leaders, uh, sorry, uh, we miss uh, Trotsky on the right, would share the same admiration for uh, America, for Taylorism and Fordism, an attitude best condensed by Trotsky in 1924 when he wrote, and Trotsky was a Bolshevik leader who had lived in New York. He wrote, Americanized Bolshevism will tri triumph and smash imperialist Americanism. So the revolution as the fight of an Americanism against another one. This attitude had been a constitutive factor in Russian architecture since the early 20th century. And its chronicle would be too long for this brief presentation. Let me just say here that this syndrome, according to which Russian architects and city planners were considering American cities and the buildings as the very image of the future new, new world, Novi, Novimir, that they were aspiring at shaping, did not expire with a repression against the avant-garde. Attempts at uh, to import American modernism into post-war Russia had been intense around 1945, in particular thanks to the Architects Committee of the National Council of American-Soviet Friendship, which sent to Moscow a remarkable exhibition. Never shown here, this has been very well discussed by uh, Ricky Anderson here uh, present, but with the convergent unfolding of the Cold War and Zdanovism, these attempts had failed. The interest for American architecture and cities did not, however, vanish completely. It remained partly buried for nearly 10 years. Architects such as Burov and critics such as Arkin were stigmatized in the late 40s for their alleged cosmopolitanism. But at the same time, the journal America was disseminating in the USSR in exchange for the journal Soviet Union. Um, images of an affluent society. And it is very important to note here that Americanism in this respect operated both at the high level in culture, in technology, and also at the level of popular culture. At Noetajnaya America, the famous book by Ilf and Petrov was republished in the late 40s with uh, Ilf's photographs and was extremely popular, as everybody knows here. There had already been several configurations, conjunctures of Americanism, the utopian 20s, uh, the technological 30s, the monumental 40s, and early 50s. Uh, during that time, the skeleton of the Soviet industry had been created by American factories, in particular the ones of Albert Kahn. The USSR imported not only factories, but anti-processes of production, from tractors to ice cream, 
uh, factories. The pattern was followed also, and this is the very important trip of Mikoyan with dozens of engineers to the US in 1936. Uh, the pattern was followed by a massive transfer of hardware within, within the framework of the wartime land lease agreement. Let me clarify here what I understand by Americanism. This phenomenon cannot be reduced to influence, to models, or to ziaimosias. Rather, it deals with the idealization of the American model perceived as the representation of Russia's future. America is our future. And with the transfer of systems, devices, forms, images, distorted through a process of displacement and condensation, similar to what Freud considers to be the labor of dreams in his Traum Deutung, where the observation um, and the idealization of America going to wither away under the new rule of Rusyov. The no November 55 issue of Architectura SSSR contains, as everybody knows here, a fold-out image of Moscow architects sailing towards new shores and one of these faraway shores was again, again America. Uh, and here an interesting episode which I uh, uh, will investigate more in detail. In the December 55 issue of another magazine, this time the Architectural Forum in uh, New York, a short article mentioned the grim end put to a Soviet expert's US tour. The journal reports that while in Washington DC, Alexander Vlasov, president of the Academy of Architecture and member of a study delegation of 10 Soviet architects, which was spending six weeks in the US, had learned that he had been demoted for, from his duties. The, the news even hit the uh, provincial press in Kentucky and the Midwest. Frank Lloyd Wright, who had met Vlasov in Moscow in 37, and upon his visit at Taliesin, wrote in uh, November 15 in the Milwaukee Sentinel about Vlasov, saying that he was a very nice guy. He wrote exactly, he believed he could learn something from me. He was too good to be a Russian. Uh, so what is interesting here? is uh, that there is in the end something ironic in seeing one of the main figures in Soviet architectural, in the Soviet architectural establishment being sent on a six weeks tour to the US less than one year after Khrushchev's epochal address to the Congress of Builders where Khrushchev, Khrushchev famously pointed his finger towards the architects guilty of his lichestva. Uh, going to the US to study the US and at the same time de been demoted. As early as September of the same year, Architectura SSSR had published the first positive article on American architecture in more than 20 years and perhaps ever before that date. The demotion of Vlasov coincides with the decision to cancel the construction of an ultimate Vysotka in Moscow. The, pro the program uh, is well known, was derived from our American precedents, as we know, and was made possible through the agency of Vyacheslav Oltarzewski, the only architect in Moscow with a professional experience acquired in New York and a key agent of Americanism. This program, uh, and we see here on the uh, right, uh, upper right corner, uh, what Oltarzewski would, would in the end uh, start designing in the 50s, returning to a completely different view of the American skyscrapers. Um, the Wysotki are a clear case of schizophrenia, a manifest rejection of America, parallel to a latent endorsement of American types and building practice. Images, and I like images, they have a very important uh, uh, significance in this process. Images provide an interesting evidence. Here the post-war Pabier Dakar, he's represented in front of a compressed version of Moscow silhouette, linking it to a sort of image of what uh, would have been a, a Soviet future. A few years later, the Volga car provide another evidence based on the Ford 52 sedan, as, a, as we know, this car designed by Andrei Lipgard, the Soviet automobile designer, 
uh, in production in 56 is still represented against the uh, Wysotka, this time the lonely Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The organization of the 55 study trip with Vlasov and others gave a clear answer. American East was returning to the forefront of Soviet attention with new channels and new forms. Uh, and um, beginning in 55, uh, writers such as Boris Palevoy, architects, journalists were stand, sent on study trips. Here we see a trip, one of the early trips of journalist Siemero Vamierike. Uh, Soviet officials attended conventions of the American Institute of Architects. Americans attended the 58 UIA conference in Moscow. American mass culture was also crossing the boundaries in the air with the famous Voice of America's uh, jazz programs. Uh, Conova was probably the single most popular American in Eastern Europe and the, U and the USSR at that time and you see practical Americanism on the ground with the Stiliagi. Among the very channels, uh, expositions were soon to become one of the most significant, from the universal to the specialized ones. The first post-war one in Brussels, he called the Paris show of 37. In 37, Jofan was facing Speer. Here, Polyansky was facing Daryl Stone. And this confrontation would be extended to the, the uh, exposition in Montreal in 67 and in Osaka in 70, where the two pavilions would be at both ends of the longitudinal axis. Uh, Nikita Khrushchev visited uh, uh, the US, and this uh, visit is really important as it was the first one who, uh, giving to Soviet audiences the unexpected images of uh, American affluence, in contrast with the dire discourse of propaganda. In the field of, social, of specialized expositions, a central place is, of course, occupied by the American National Exposition held in Moscow's Sokolniki Park in 59, a memorable event in many ways, documented recently here, and which has been studied in detail. It was really interesting what the American secret services grasped from their observation of uh, the Soviet Union and how uh, the uh, uh, Soviet visitor respond to a show, dismissing uh, the fact that the Americans were showing consumption. This was exactly their intention, to tantalize the Russian audiences and uh, asking for a better representation of technology, but this is not what the Americans wanted to show. Architecture was present, in uh, particular through this uh, section of the ex exposition uh, in the back. Um, this new, uh, and interestingly, a few weeks before, uh, in a context which had been uh, defined by Nikita Fyushchev's famous uh, speech of uh, 57 with a slogan, Dagnat i Pirignat, catch up and surpass America. Uh, in this context, it's interesting to see what the Soviets sh did show in the symmetrical exposition uh, in New York in 59. Uh, the Americans were showing kitchens, the Soviets were showing, showing Sputniks and machinery. They were showing technology. And, and also some, uh, some cars. Um, a new stage in which uh, the US are very proactive. This phase of the new Cold War is, is a new one in the Chronicle of Americanism. America had been passive until this brief episode of 45 and becomes very active through all sorts of thematic shows which travel through the Soviet Union and probably have more of an impact on the professional audiences than the Sokolniki one. This one is an, an exhibition uh, on uh, architecture in the US which uh, shows uh, works by Neutra or works by Ms. van der Rohe, uh, curated by Arthur Drexler, who was at that time the head of the architecture and design department at MoMA. The large format, the large format Color Magazine America devoted an issue to architecture, insisting on urban renewal and using typically Soviet rhetorical tropes to discuss what you see on the left. La uh, Nova Metapie, a new stage in American architecture with an article by Wolf von Eckhart, then the resident critic at the Washington Post. In the early stages, American, Americanism, 
as in the early stages, and I want to, again, to insist on this, Americanism was not about influence, not about observing forms, but rather about idealization. The real knowledge was not very structured, and led, yet it led to what I would call a critical assimilation of American buildings and programs. Attention focused on a series of fetishes, again, America 64, again, uh, a, a certain number of fetishes, the skyscrapers, the shopping centers, the airports, we'll hear more of that. Paradoxically, the actual knowledge of American architecture, architecture was extremely spotty at that time. The first comprehensive study was published only in 63 by Alexandra Christiani, Novatia e Architectura Sechea. Uh, Alexandra Christiani was the mother of uh, Yevgeny As, uh, Mieszdunami. Uh, the book featured pro prominently industrial programs. Uh, for instance, a Coca-Cola factory, no longer an airplane factory, a Coca-Cola factory. And it's interesting to see that at the same time, the first handbook discussing Soviet architecture, the handbook signed by Bulinkin, uh, Historia Sovietskoy Architecturi, shows for the first time in uh, 30 years the Chelyabinsk tractor plant by Khan. But the uh, authors uh, mentioned are Fisenko and Shevtsov, not, not Albert. Um, again, uh, yes, uh, Cristiani shows a lever and, 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 and Seagram, and also Lincoln Center. And I think it's very interesting to look at what I would call probably the, more important, the most important parallel in those years between uh, academic modernism in the US represented by the work of uh, Gerald Stone, by the work of uh, Philip Johnson or Wallace Harrison, and what, for instance, here, Pasokin would do. Uh, five minutes, but maybe I'll be a little longer. Um, uh, Reinsured on the front of industrial buildings, uh, Russian attention got sharper in all the sphere of absolutivanie. And it is here that the Khrushchev's, uh, period, uh, Khrushchev period is specific. One of the highlights of Khrushchev's trip of 59 has been his visit to the IBM cafeteria in San Jose, California, where he met with the boss of IBM, uh, Thomas Watson. And here, uh, an interesting symptom is the translation of a book written by Victor Grun and Larry Smith, Shopping Towns USA, translated in 66, uh, six years after the original version. No other translation was ever made in the world. Uh, the book was really important as it, uh, uh, in a way, it considered that the future of Absolutivanie in the USSR had to be based on the development of American uh, shopping centers. The translation was slightly, slightly expurg expurgated, uh, keeping what Milonov, the uh, redactor, considered as the scientific and technical aspects, in short, the sound uh, core of the book. Grun himself, very important architect, who not only because he was the, for years the employer of Frank Gehry, who has a very strong relationship with him, but Grun really invented the shopping center uh, in the US. Uh, Grun visited Moscow and had discussions with uh, Soviet planners as he explains it in, he, in his um, memoirs. He criticized, for instance, the project we, we talked about Zelenograd this morning. He, he, he criticized an urban scheme for a satellite city in Novosibirsk, but never landed a contract. The book only was published. Uh, this unique case of translation of a design handbook uh, bears, bears witness of a changing focus of Americanism, and I'm almost done. Um, a sort of symmetry with the uh, cycle of Al Albert Kahn, uh, Kahn's factories appears here. The Soviets are by no capable of building their own factories, thanks, thanks to the methodology left by Khan, which became the core of the Soviet industrial architecture doctrine. But now the emphasis was put on consumption before production. An alternating pattern of official and professional trips can be observed in this period. The report published by Mikhail Pasokhin after the trip in May in 65 uh, with a group of architects and, and builders, contributed to write a new chapter in the long history of Americanism. Not, not, 
Certainly not because it, uh, uh, it, it included the usual image of American Trushobi. You could not write anything positive on America without showing Trushobi, or, so it was impossible. Uh, but uh, it is interesting because it reveals a new geography, no longer Chicago, no longer New York. Uh, the observation shifts to the West and to the automobile-driven society of America. Uh, and here, of course, we see that Americanism takes a new um, uh, meaning at a time in which, finally, the prophecy of an early, early uh, advocate of Americanism is revived. This av advocate was um, uh, uh, Osinski or Obolensky, who wrote in 1928 this remarkable essay called uh, Ameri Americanskia Americanski Automobile ili Rasiska Teljega. Osinski was, uh, in fact, the very ideologue behind Ohitovich the urbanist, the one who considered that the future of Russia already in the 20s was in the massive use of automobile. Like all the proponents of these ideas, he was shot in 1938. Uh, but his prophecy uh, was clearly heard at that time. Uh, and it's interesting that in his discussions in, uh, in Moscow, Grun remembers having warned Pasorhin against the dangers of an automobile-based uh, urban society. Very interesting thing. And here, of course, we see that Pasorhin had learned from the American projects he has seen between Sixth Avenue as redesigned by Dural Stone and, and Prospect Kalinina, there are obvious comparisons. So, of course, we could talk about, uh, uh, about uh, resemblance, about uh, buildings which can be considered as parallels, high rises of various types, and it's, it, it, it is a stimulating exercise. But again, my, uh, uh, my story is to show how much America represented the future and, and by the way, this is the way Khrushchev introduced, we should not forget that when Khrushchev opened the 59 exhibition in Sokolniki, he said, uh, what America shows us is what we will be able to achieve in the future. So in a way, look at us in the future. Uh, there are, uh, in, the, in the realm of resemblance, really uh, interesting parallels, and I can't resist showing you these two uh, airport terminals, uh, uh, JFK and, uh, and Sheremetyevo. Uh, in the last part of this period, the knowledge of American architecture became more uh, articulated. Uh, we see here, for instance, in Ikonikov's 1979 book on the architecture of the US, a book which was ex immensely popular here, that new heroes appear, Robert Venturi, even the West Coast marginal architecture of uh, uh, Drop City is appearing. But for me, the real uh, final episode is perhaps uh, the, or is certainly, the invitation uh, Raymond Louis, the one of the main American industrial designers, uh, uh, accepted to redesign the Moskvich car. Here we see Louis uh, as discussed in the pages of um, America and the Moskvich prototype from his archive. So again, uh, it is here an anti-civilization. The freeways as seen by Posokhin, the car itself, uh, all the uh, buildings, building types which are related with the automobile-driven uh, civilization. Finally, uh, Americanism in the 70s is reaching back uh, ideas which had been uh, uh, exposed in the 20s by people uh, like uh, Obolensky and, um, and, and several architects. Uh, in short, and I will end up where I started, new themes, new obsessions uh, after 54, significant for late Soviet architecture, architecture, but to be inscribed in a more complex world. We've seen this interesting parallel with North Africa, which I think is very revealing. Uh, and we, we perceive the anti international articulation of Soviet uh, architecture as very complex, more complex than what uh, the story, uh, how the story was told until now. Uh, it is clear that even at a moment in which, as we see here, the two supermen had a divergent strabism, a divergent vision, uh, uh, America was still 
uh, an active uh, an active drive for uh, uh, technological and uh, urban invention in this country. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much for a uh, great talk, and I, um, I really appreciate how you're sort of reworking the definition of Americanism uh, for our understanding. First, before I ask a question, though, I wanted to just um, share like a little bit of mo more data about the 1955 tour, which is one of my favorite topics. Uh, I really liked how you showed what happened to Vlasov. To be fair to uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, Wright actually really liked Vlasov. He actually came here in 1937 and met him. And then the, the really f fun part of the tour is that um, Vlasov is actually, he's the only architect on the tour in America. All the other ones are basically like housing engineers. Builders. And then Vlasov, like, so they go, like you said, they go around all these cities in America. When it comes time to go to Chicago, Vlasov leaves the tour. He takes off, and where does he go? He goes to visit Frank Lloyd Wright at, at his home, right? And then what happens at that meeting is that they both sit around and they basically bitch and complain about how Le Corbusier's modernism won the day. Because, you know, Wright's version of modernism didn't win and neither has Vlasov's. But what this leads me to, oh, by the way, one more interesting detail about the 55 tour, and this is addressed to uh, local Russian researchers. As you probably know, they bought an American home and they packed it up like a tract home. They packed it up and they shipped it back to Moscow. Nobody has been able to find in the archives what happened to this house. And somebody, somebody here needs to find out what they did with it, how, how it got here, and what they actually learned from it. But here finally is my question. Um, in, through those kinds of tours, how do you study sort of from the Soviet perspective how they figured out where to draw the line, like where to actually draw the limits about what they might borrow and incorporate into this vision of the future. And I think about the 55 tour because they go around visiting all these American homes and none of them are really gonna ever serve a model for the Soviet mass housing. Yet what they're getting, what, what it seems to me that they're getting out of this visit is more about the technology and the construction method. So my general question is, is how do you examine where they draw the line and what they decide to leave uh, out of what it is that they borrow from the, um, from the Americans? Well, let's, let's put things straight. I mean, the, yes, the tour of uh, 55 is really interesting. It, it appears that Vlasov even uh, leaving the trip, and this is very well told by David Kant in his book, The Dancer Defects, about this general pattern of, uh, 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 what, what I would say, um, uh, immigration and, uh, and exile. And um, he apparently take a car by himself to go to Taliesin against the rest of the delegation. But where to draw a line? Uh, I don't think there was such a thing as Guavni Architektor Sovietskavo Sayuza. The system was centralized, but it was not a, syst a centralized system which operated uh, top-down in every aspect. So they were parallel interests, I mean, uh, and this uh, sociology of uh, modernism uh, should be discussed more in detail. So what was this? How were the systems of powers within the architectural profession yeah. at a time in which architecture, was, after 54, was put second after so after construction in the orga uh, organization of various uh, uh, organs. So uh, I think that there were l very many different strategies which were never me meant to be clearly articulated uh, in order to draw the line. And if we look at the reality of the technological transformation, it is clear that the, the prefabrication uh, policy, which was the core policy of uh, state construction, was based on uh, Western European patterns, in particular the Camus system, and uh, at in parallel, and this is here that we need to probably, or you need, I can't do it by myself, but uh, the we is rhetorical, uh, one needs to uh, discuss on a broad, uh, in a very broad uh, manner, uh, what, uh, where, uh, who went where, the meaning of trips to England, to France, of uh, discovering this technology and this way of composing things. Where, 
where does the idea of a microrayon come from? There well, were the quartali of the 30s, which were largely uh, contaminated by the ideas of Ernst May and the Germans. And did it come from the neighborhood unit as imagined the US in the 20s, from its British version? I mean, it's very, the system was much more porous. So I don't think that, you know, in short, there was no line to draw because it was not a sort of front situation. Uh, the metaphor of the line doesn't work. We have to deal with uh, more of a metaphor, of the, the, the image of a matrix uh, or even a more organic representation of where ideas were coming. And I'm re returning to a 59 uh, exhibition, uh, exposition in Sokolniki. It's interesting to, to, to see when you read all the, they were, uh, uh, visitors books which were filled with remarks Susan, Susan Reed has uh, discussed them in a very good article and the main questions were why do you show by visitors who were very often party or come someone activist but they would write in most cases you're not showing us the technology we want to, to see the technology we see only the consumer goods and uh, we are not impressed so uh, uh, I think that they were, uh, they were channels that communicated and others that did not. Uh, Jean-Louis, hello. Uh, I want to thank you very much for a very stimulating presentation. And I want to come back to the relationship to Victor Grun, which I think is an incredibly important story here. Because I, I've encountered um, the translation of Victor Grun in another very important book, which many of us know, Georgi Grados Gorod Ibit, where we, where we see images drawn directly from Grun's book, um, kind of used and repurposed in there. But the book is also about uh, services. And I thought it was very interesting, this point that you made about the Khrushchev, the specificity of Americanism in the Khrushchev era about, the, the, uh, about services. And I wonder, is there, I mean, can, can we trace this into building typologies, the creation of new models for cafes and for, for shops in the 50s and 60s? I wonder if, if, uh, if you could comment on that a little. Yes, again, uh, it's research to be done, I guess, uh, or, or I'm very ill-informed, but I think it would be interesting to see how the uh, system of state research and design institutes develops during that, in that period. The relative weight of the one working on housing, which were dominant, but also the emergence of uh, teams like the team of Gradov, for instance, very important figure in, the, in this context, how uh, they, they uh, have been uh, looking at the problem of uh, cinemas during that, during that time, how the entire system observing other practices, imagining types, and then uh, in a way um, refining and disseminating the types and leaving space for individual projecti within uh, mass production, I think there is a, a, a very, very necessary investigation to be made. Good. Thank you.